Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafont, your favorite radio host, your only radio host and favorite girl, of course, broadcasting to you from the lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean on Between the Lines. And you know, I always start my show off the same way with gratitude, thankfulness. I am so thankful to be here. It's a beautiful day. I'm alive. I'm kicking. Well, not a lot, but I'm alive, breathing and enjoying life and living life to the full. And I wish all of you all to do the same. Be safe and be well and enjoy what gift you have in life. And I have a wonderful woman on with me today. Her name is Judith, Judith Welshman. I was trying to blend her whole name together. Judith <laughs> Welshman. <laughs> and I go usually by Judith Welsh as an as Yes. And let me tell you what we're talking about today. Your favorite topic, mental health. Is yes. <laughs> Is it a new understanding? Let me repeat it. Mental health, is it a new understanding? And you'll know why. Give it that title in a while. Let me tell you a bit about Judith. She's a retired clinical social worker. She brings mental health knowledge to her, to her historical fiction. She has a book by applying today's diagnosis to what we know about historical figures. Welsh offers readers a brilliant new understanding of the people who came before us. She lives on the seacoast of New Hampshire, in the woods, how lovely, with her husband in the woods. So if you're talking <laughs> isolation people, she knows. With her, <laughs> husband, <laughs> with her husband of 25 years, oh, she knows it well. 25 years and an abundance of wildlife. Oh my God, she knows isolation. <laughs> they, have, <laughs> they have two very active dogs and one not so active cat, so clearly they know isolation. Judith is also the author of Last Walls, and I hope to show you that one minute trailer of her book on Last Walls. Let me get to Judith. Judith, oh my God, it's such a pleasure to have you on Between the Lines. We Thank are talking. You. Yes, I want to go straight into the topic, Judith. Mental health. Listen to me. You know that as a, me as a mental health practitioner, yeah, social worker. Yeah. This virus has manifested everything other than the virus itself. Yeah. <laughs> everything else than the virus itself. The virus is minding its own business, doing what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And somehow it has managed to highlight a number of latent, um, I don't know what to call it, latent things, let me say things, within people, because it's not the trees, I don't hear the trees saying anything, the birds or the animals, they seem to be minding their own business. So it's the humans, things are manifesting in humans that were latent, that are now showing up and they are realizing, well, I don't know if they're realizing, but I am seeing behaviors that are synonymous with mental health. And, and with this virus, people, the, the authorities, the governments are realizing people are going to have issues. I think they realize it after they put people in isolation and they put all these sort of restrictions, it started to show up. And then the mental health came in on the scene to start to talk. They didn't realize it would have caused that from before. They thought it would have been easy, just isolate, set social distance. But this is what is showing up more than ever. People are in homes with their husbands, their wives, and children, and it's like they want to murder them. They, are, they cannot stand their own selves. They cannot stand the, the man that they claim they love, the children that they claim they love. They are no longer working. They are at home. They are not able to drive their cars on the, on the highway, on the roads, like they used to. What, what, how is that different to the past? I was saying to a friend, Judith, the other day, I said, hold on. People who went through the Holocaust and slavery and those type of things where they were separated from their children right in front of their eyes, murdered, put in imprisonment, maltreated, abused, all sorts of things. How did they manage then and what's happening with us now? Your book takes us back to historical figures, the then and the now. I want you to talk to us as somebody who has seen, who has witnessed, who has written about, who has experienced and killed in this area to highlight and to leave us with some, some sort of tips 
to, to, to help these humans, I have to call them humans, <laughs> to cope in this time of need. Because this is just, to me, in my, in my own estimation, this is just a testing ground for what is to come. And if they cannot handle something like this, how will they handle anything bigger or better than COVID-19? Well, that, that's an interesting question. Um, and what I found in, in the research from my book and in working um, in clinical mental health, uh, people have a resilience, resiliency that is just amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they, at first, they, they, they become anxious and, you know, like we're seeing with the um, upwards movement of, of arguments and abuse going on within the family settings because they're locked inside. Um, you know, at first it's a fear and then they, they start thinking about it and say, okay, what can I do differently? You know, like we have people actually out taking walks. Mm -hmm. We have people reading books. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I, I have, um, what I want to first say is, you know, number one and foremost, to help you cope in this day and age of technology, you know, there are things that you can do online that don't cost a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have aquariums in zoos around the country that are uh, putting together virtual tours that you can take with your, your child. Mm -hmm. um, there are now, uh, what's become a now booming business is online libraries where you can go and you can download books mm -hmm. and um, games that you can play with your children. But you could write your own book uh, too, Judith. You can write your own book. You have the time now. Yeah. Well, I started. I started this um, a, a, about three years ago when I retired, mm -hmm. and I mean, I can say it has clearly been an adventure. And you know, at first, when I when I got home after my last day of work, I just like looked at myself and I said, "Oh, good. What am I going to do now?" <laughs> and and that's when I realized that I had had a whole backload of books that I'd always, always was meaning to read and I never got the chance because I was working. Mm -hmm. And um, so I sat down and I started reading and I caught up and, and I was reading a stero uh, Stephen Berry novel and, and I went to Google something and up popped uh, the heroine of my book, Grand Duchess, Tatiana, the, the second daughter of the Tsar of Russia, and I realized, my goodness, she did a lot more than what, what people had been led to believe. Hmm. And so I sat down and started writing. And as I started researching for the book, I noticed several things that, that just jumped out of as me as a clinician. And which, this has been one of my Baines is because I look at everything through a clinical lens that we say in the business. And I started seeing things that, that I didn't think anybody has ever looked at, you know, and I could be wrong. I'm not, you know, I'm not the world's leading authority. But what I found is, is, is that um, her mother, um, Alexandra, the Empress of Russia, who was married to Nicholas, um, suffered from possible PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, because she lost her mother at an early age. And, you know, and then I started following that thread, and, and I saw social anxiety, um, I saw, you know, different things that all of a sudden started to click. Because as Alexander, when I was looking at pictures of her as a young child and as an adult, I could see the, um, her eyes started changing and they started, um, they weren't lighting up as, 
if some when, when someone smiles. And I started following it, and then I realized that she had possible social anxiety compounded with the PTSD. And just think of it. I mean, she has five. First of all, she's in a, a place, a country where people really didn't like her. And she had very few friends. And then she had four healthy daughters and then a sickly son. I mean, that must have been devastating. And it's the same thing with today. I mean, you you look around and, and everybody is is sitting inside their homes going, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You know, in, in having anxiety, and I tell a lot of people, <coughs> excuse me, that, you know, instead of sitting in front of the TV, watching the TV and, and watching, <coughs> excuse me, all the newscasts going on, you know, switch to another channel. Get up and go do some work outside. I mean, I think for my myself and my husband, I think this is the first year we've actually had the lawn done on time, and um, <laughs> and and just going on in 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 doing things outside. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to leave your property. I mean, yes, I'm lucky. We live in the middle middle of um, a a couple of acres of land, and and you know we can't be seen by from the road but you know there is stuff that you can you can get out there and actually do right so Judith you are out in the woods the only human with you is your husband and I'm asking how are you dealing with isolation with being on how much acres of land people here or in other countries may not be let's say as fortunate as you to have so many acres <laughs> you know, to be separate from another human being. But they have neighbors right next door, a mm -hmm. whole community. They have their families within them and they're having difficulty coping. Help them to understand what is going on. Why are they having such a challenge? You have been doing this for 25 years. Or did you, or were you always like this? Or did you go mad before being isolated? <laughs> I, I know, I know you're saying, I know you're saying because you're isolated because it seems to be the reverse. When they're not isolated, they're saying, now they're isolated, they're becoming insane. What's happening? Well, the fact is, is that there's always been a, a human interconnectivity. Um, and, and we've always had it. And when we don't have it, when we are isolated, um, we miss it terribly. And, and for us, um, like I do have neighbors, I do have a community. I walk with my neighbor every mo one of my neighbors every morning, and then we always have what we call our coffee clutch, since this whole thing started, where we sit. We each sit on each uh, on either side of our road, a group of us, and 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 we yell back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and you know. W w People can find different ways to, to, to have the interconnectivity. Mm -hmm. And when we, you know, and, and, and we strive for new ways to do it. I mean, I have, I mean, Zoom is one, and I have the, um, I only, I don't not only use it to be, be talking to you, but I mean, I have a very close-knit family, even though we live spread across the country. You know, we make it a, a point at least once a month to get together on Zoom and, 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 and talk. Um, also, um, I've started writing letters. I mean, we can do different things. And, and it's just a question of us going back to the old days in, in, in trying what they did back then. I mean, in during the Spanish flu epidemic between 1918 and 1920, um, you know, people found different ways to communicate, um, to let people know that, hey, you know what, I'm still here, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going anywhere. And, and just, if you read some of the letters that, that, that were written by soldiers to their loved ones, oh, yeah. um, in World War, during World War One, I. I mean, it was just amazing. I mean, 
to me, you know, it was, it, we've lost that ability, but now we, we have the, the, the time to, to regain that. Yeah. And, and being, being interconnected that way. I would uh, also suggest journaling. If you having a difficulty coping, it's now time to express your thoughts, your feelings mm -hmm. in a journal. Get a yeah. book, and when we say a journal, you don't have to go out to buy anything. Get a book that you may have at home or sheets of paper, and you just keep documenting what you're feeling, how you're feeling, because I will tell you, these stories will end up being a book, a published book, probably one day. Your oh, children, absolutely. Yeah, your children may be able to look back because you may be gone by that time, and they may have something to cope with, and they can look back and say, my parents, this is what they did in order to cope during a time like this. So use the opportunity, but some people are not seeing the opportunity because they are so focused on the media, Judith. Their, mm -hmm. head, their head and their heart and their body and everything is inside the TV, the, the social media, the everything else, that they are not focusing on, let me spend time to get to know me. I am feeling something that I never felt before. I am going through something physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually that I never went to before. And this is, this is difficult for me to cope with. I have to find a way. So you can start journaling your thoughts. If you're up late at night and you can't sleep, write, write, read, pray, meditate. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, one of the, the, the resources that I do, I used when writing my book, um, I actually, um, there were several uh, translated copies of the journals of Grand Duchess Tatiana in her sister, Grand Duchess Olga, um, and one from her sister, Maria. Uh, the only one we don't have any written documentation on um, was Anastasia. Um, but you know, I, by, go, by reading through those, those books that had come out, I mean, I was able to find, you know, I, w I was able to look and say, well, yeah, this is what they were thinking. This is what they were doing. And, and it helped me when, when I started writing my books. The one thing that we can do is journal. I mean, I kept a journal every day from the age of 11 up to 25. Um, and, and it helped me. And, and I've been able to use those books by going back and saying, okay, this is what I was feeling. This is when I felt this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and actually helping me to put it into the books, to thinking how, you know, these grand duchesses actually thought and felt. I mean, they weren't shrinking violets. Hmm. They, they used to take, you know, w w when, when they were alive and they were young women, they ran committees. They ran donation centers. Mm -hmm. um, Grand Duchess Tatiana was actually president of the Russian Red Cross at the age of 18. Wow. And did a marvelous job. I mean, these people weren't the shrieking violets that we know today. Mm -hmm. They were more than a footnote in history. They did care about what they were doing. And, and they were intelligent, highly educated, Women, I mean, up until the day that they were murdered, they were studying. I, Tatiana had an interest in, in uh, fashion design and made much of her, many of her own, own clothes. Olga was, and she was also interested in medicine. She was a surgical nurse during the war and she was well thought of as a surgical nurse. Um, her sister, Olga, was an amazing administrator, a brilliant conversationalist, and interested in archaeology. Uh, today, Anastasia, she, she was um, a fes a, a, an actress. She loved acting. She loved painting. And some of her paintings have gone for millions of dollars. Wow. And, and um, Maria was a prolific writer. And you know, they each had their own interests, but yet they came together and they worked together yeah. to, yeah. along with their mother, 
doing things to, to help alleviate the pain that the countrymen were going through. Were there mistakes made? Absolutely. Yeah, well, you made a, a salient point there. They did it together. Yeah. And, and the thing in this challenging time with this, in, with this virus is that we need to realize we're not alone. Mm -hmm. We're in it together. And, you know, because the virus has no respect for anyone, mm -hmm. nothing could save you. No money, no status, no title, nope. no, no color, no background, no social status nope. can help you. So you cannot say you could buy the virus, meet up the virus in a corner and say, I'll pay you so much so that you don't come to me. No, it cannot work like that. Right. You know? So I mean, we need to realize we're in this together and we need to look out for one another. One of the things that they have been noticing is that mankind, we, you know, we, have, we have to come back to the basics of mankind. Love, yep. you know, love and yeah. unity, love and unity. Right, and, and we can work together, even social distancing. I mean, we can, we can, one of the things we can do is support the people that are on the front lines. Oh, yes. Hmm. You know, constantly saying thank you. Oh, yes. You know, I mean, I, I can go out once a week to get some groceries and whatnot, but I always make it a point to stop and say thank you to the grocery to the people that are working in the grocery store. Yes, or the cops. Themselves. Yes, exposing themselves to make to, to allow you to right. have what you want. Yeah, and you know, I mean, just that simple act of kindness. Gratitude, Judith. Gratitude. Absolutely, but that yes. simple act of kindness and gratitude mm -hmm. will it will help us to get through. Yes. And, and, you know, it, it, you know, you don't even have to do it. You know, you can do it without anybody knowing about it, like ordering a sheet cake at the local grocery store yeah. for when, for, for time that, you know, ordering a sheet cake, giving it to the, you know, to, to having the baker take it upstairs and say, okay, guys, this is from you. This is for you. Just random back pack practice, random acts of kindness. That's right. But this should be, a natural thing it shouldn't be because of a virus you're doing it this is supposed to be something you do every day oh absolutely but we forget ourselves oh really <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> oh absolutely because, because my concern is when the virus is settled and everything dust is settled you go right back to the default being mean to everyone else that's not oh. how it's supposed to be absolutely and you know and and i've caught myself a couple of times <laughs> and and I'd sit there and say, oh, wait a minute, rewind. <laughs> rewind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and I try to do that. And, you know, my book is about coping with, with, with a natural happening. Mm -hmm. uh, coping with loved one's deaths coping with life in general yes and you know i think that's the one thing that i want people to bring away go away come away with is is you know no matter what happens as long as you have hope in 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 faith oh yeah then you know that you're going to get through it I'm going to make you pause there for a second because that's a very good point to showcase your video trailer. Let me just hop across to my screen here to see if I can find that. Oh, I think I lost it. Give me a second. Let me just bring up a screen. Oh, what am I doing? You sound like me. Yeah, what am I doing? <laughs> Oh, I lost the link. Did I lose the link? Yes. <laughs> Let me see here. Let me just, oh, I wanted to pause that one second. Yeah, it takes a little bit of manipulation here. Beautiful. Let me go wide screen. Oh, there you go. Yes. That's it. Yeah, let me come back.
Nice. Thank you. Not a problem at all. I always like to feature the, the book trailers, you know, of person's books so that you can get a feel. Ooh, what's happening here? <laughs> it's going second. over again. It's go yeah. <laughs> Give me one second. Yeah. It, it's, I start the book out in, in the night, in the 1996 when they were, um, when it actually came about. Mm -hmm. that you know yeah no they had all been killed oh wow and um it was interesting uh when they used the dna testing i mean they used uh prince philip mm -hmm. and a couple of um romanoffs that that you know i mean the romanoff family has continued mm -hmm. and um you know and they were able to use their uh, cheek swabs and and identify. Yep, yeah. they were actually murdered. Wow! Even though the old Soviet Union denied it for years, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and said, "Oh well, they just you know they're out in the Caspian Sea on their boat, or they're <laughs> this one." Um, you know, there there was a story that every single one of the Grand Duchesses had 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 escaped, and. Um, you know, we have the famous Anna Anderson uh, story that said she was Anastasia and, and a couple of others. I mean, I think there's always been a hope that one of them, one of them did survive. And um, I mean, I know that I always hope that. Um, and, you know, this isn't something that I take lightly. I'm, um, I've been interested in, in history. Uh, that my father gave me an interest as early on and and looking at the past and using some of the past. Mm -hmm. One second, Tommy. We have to wrap up now, um, Judith, uh, because I have another episode coming up right behind you. Yeah. But we, you know, I, I appreciate the, as you said, coming down in the end before I showed the trailer, the what the book is really about, to give hope to empower, yes. you know, inspire, um, you know, true, even though people die, they died for a reason and they left mm -hmm. a legacy for us to be able to learn from and to follow and to, add, and to add to those stories. Yeah. So it is not for the story to die with them, but it's for us to continue and build on those stories. Yeah. And that's the absolute truth. I mean, yeah. These people weren't the isolated shrinking violets mm -hmm. and they, and, and they're more than just a footnote in history because they, they gave so much, including mm -hmm. their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, we must remember that and remember them uh, for who they are, yeah. not what they were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thank mm -hmm. you for that. I thank you for that. Judith, it has been a pleasure having you on Between the Lines. And I loved every bit of it. Me too, me too. Say hi to your husband for me, the cat, the dog, and your neighbor who you're shouting to. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. And Thank keep, you. keep the world in hope and prayer. Yeah? Yes, absolutely. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>